people from the North Rockland Business Alliance. So Yay. thank you so much. Really appreciate it. <laughs> and at this point, I'd like to just thank uh, Kevin uh, Lynch, who is the reason we chose this place is the newest place uh, establishment here in North Rockland. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just want to thank everyone for coming in. You know, we're here. Um, it's always a great staff. We're always very fortunate to have a lot of parties in the other place. And uh, hopefully that we're able to bring that here and we can do the next job. And uh, the greatest thing about these two people here is they don't complain. <laughs> how the food is or the service is. Well, they're both though. They had a baby in the last week. So, uh, <laughs> it really is a family place. <laughs> I'd like to also recognize uh, Mr. Phillips, who's here from uh, the Bank Account Supervisor. Hello, everyone. Right. Pleasure to be here. We hope you have our support. Uh, Luann Canelco with the uh, Town of Stone Point. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for hosting this. And, yes. and again, you know, today is a little bit about, uh, you know, we have two uh, towns, we have three villages, three villages, right, with uh, Pomona. And it's an opportunity, you know, at the end of the day, we've got to work together. And be able to leverage our best talent, which is our people, our best asset, which is our people, and uh, try to get us together a little bit. So, at this point, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. DeTulo. As uh, as we've seen some in the papers, the Rockland County budget, town budget, school budgets, it's just uh, it's getting very challenging, obviously, to balance the budget. And the only other way, other than raising taxes and or cutting staff, uh, is going to be through economic development and. Uh, the man who has taken over the reins uh, to head up as the Chief Economic Development Officer is a great man. So we have someone, a great person, driving the, driving the uh, holding the reins uh, for Rockland County, the Chief Marketing Officer for Rockland County. Um, I had a pleasure of meeting Mr. Tatula when I worked up in Hudson Valley for the Scouts. Uh, met him, he was at Pattern for Progress at the time. Uh, prior to that, he was at the Orange County Chamber of Commerce. Prior Orange to that, County Partnership. Partner, partnership. Yeah. Partnership. Eleven years. Eleven years. Before that, he was at the Jerry Foundation yeah. with Alan Gary. Yeah. Uh, with Alan Gary, spent some time in the private sector. Um, back to uh, Orange County Chamber. Uh, I'm sorry, Orange County IDA. IDA uh, to do the Business Accelerator Group, and uh, has just a vast experience in exactly I think what Rockland needs at this point. And um, I'm also proud to call him a friend. So, Mr. Detula. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice, and you have a good man here. He has passion and compassion, ideas and ideals. And you know, when I was on the uh, council board when we did the consolidation of five Boy Scout councils, he came on a little bit after that and uh, uh, was a, a great asset to the organization. Well, it's wonderful to be here, and thank you for deeming me worthy to have a conversation with you. Uh, this is not going to be a speech or a lecture. I, if you all feel comfortable, I'd prefer that it be a seminar and we have a conversation. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about where I'm coming from, a little bit about my background, uh, and then uh, some of the strategies that we're deploying right now in Rockland County to induce inward corporate investment and to create wealth and jobs. Um, I was born and raised in the city of Poughkeepsie. I'm a first generation Italian American. My dad was actually born in Trieste, Italy, in northern Italy. And like many of you that are sitting around uh, the table here today, you don't have to go back many generations to understand and appreciate the fact that your ancestors came here for economic and political freedom. And so the whole idea of hard work, of, of saving your money, of getting a good education, uh, those were the tools that my parents used. They were their weapons on their private war on poverty. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm able to stand here now. I can remember back... Um, the first five or six years of, of my life, I was we were living in a public housing project, uh, a family of seven in a two-bedroom apartment, uh, before my dad eventually got a job at IBM. Uh, but just um, one of the memories I have back then is uh, things were tough, of course, and uh, if any of you know uh, any Italian-Americans uh, or are Italian-American, uh, there was a dish that many of us were, uh, made to really stretch the food budget, and that was simply macaroni and beans. You took a pound of macaroni and a can of, uh, of Progresso beans and you could feed you know, a family of six for about 50 cents. And I find that it's so ironic now that you know, when you go to a, 
um, a fine Italian restaurant. That's a twenty dollar dish now. Someone once asked someone once yeah, pasta was little. Someone once asked me, what's the difference between macaroni and pasta? And I said, oh, about eight dollars a pound. All of a sudden, it's pasta. Mm -hmm. um, but again, like many of you. Um, did go to college. It took me about 18 years to work my way through college. First, to Dutchess Community College, Marist. Uh, my undergraduate my undergraduate degree is actually in criminal justice. Um, and Ralph, you might be able to relate to this. I remember going out on the date and seeing the movie Paper Chase, and I said, I don't think I want to be a lawyer. This girl, yeah, right. And uh, um, so, um, and then went into economic development uh, by way of real estate. And uh, started the Orange County Partnership in 1986. The Orange County Partnership was actually the first public-private economic development organization in the state. And it was sort of a prototype for other organizations like the RE DC. I remember back in 1987, some people from Rockland County contacting us and wanting to know, asking us if we could help them in terms of setting up their bylaws and the infrastructure for a public-private uh, corporation. Um, the funding for the REDC, about 40% of it comes from the county. Uh, we get funding from three different IDAs in the region, and then we raise money in the private sector. Uh, our budget's not that large. It's about $700,000 a year. And again, our focus is to induce inward corporate investment into the, into the county. There are essentially three ways that you uh, create wealth and you create economic activity and economic vitality in the region. Metaphorically, think of economic development as a three-legged stool. And the first leg of that stool would be the attraction of corporate investment. You market your region, you make presentations, and you can try to convince companies that they can grow and prosper in your market area. The second way of creating uh, jobs and wealth is to um, retain your existing business sector. Work with the companies that are already in your community. If they have expansion needs, if they're thinking of, of adding new employment, figure out ways to uh, convince them to do that. If they're a global company, we're talking to one right now that's in Rockland County. Uh, they have two plants in China, one in Germany, and another one somewhere else in Asia. And they have a, a, a potential $10 million expansion requirement, and we're trying to convince them to do that here at their plant here. So retaining what you have and expand that. So again, the one leg is attraction, the second leg is retention, and the third leg of that stool would be the creation of jobs from within your community. Tap into the intellectual infrastructure to aspiring entrepreneurs who have ideas, who know how to work hard and they want to create wealth. Um, that's an area that the REDC hasn't focused on a lot, but we're putting more emphasis on that. It's so important, particularly in a global economy, to hold on to your smart people, to convince them and to give them the confidence that, that our economy is, uh, has vitality and they'll be able to take advantage of our vitality and help it grow. One of the things that I've learned and I'm convinced of, particularly in a global economy, is that smart money follows smart people. So if we can do everything we can to keep our smart people here. That's why we do the 40 under 40 program, for instance, to encourage and to motivate smart people. Uh, that's a very, very important thing. I've been here now for about seven months, uh, and I have to say, number one, I'm enjoying it tremendously. Um, like many of you, uh, I have a, an old-fashioned, traditional work ethic. I was putting on my tie at 10 after 6 this morning, and that was after being up for an hour and a half. And I'll get home maybe at 8, 9 o'clock. And I do that. I'm on the other side of 60, but I still have the enthusiasm, the energy, uh, and the, um, uh, yeah, the energy and the enthusiasm as, that I had when I was 22 or 23 years old. To me, that's very, very important. So, as I look at Rockland County, I'll just share a couple of quick observations. And then, as I indicated earlier, hopefully I've instigated some inner dialogue and we can open it up to, uh, open it up to that. I know Howard has to leave. I apologize. Yeah. Oh, I no. should skip out now before yeah. 7. Okay. I and just want to say that I've had the opportunity to sit down with Mike. And, you know, I was very impressed not only with his extensive background in business and you know, working to create new businesses, but more so he took the time out to see that what we had in the Havistro community, what our needs are, where there is vacant land, 
what we're trying to market. So he came in prepared and ready to hit the ground. And I think you're going to see a lot more out of him. You know, not the same thing in the past, but North Rockland is the challenging. We don't have the throughway. We're right not next to the TZ Bridge or the Garden State or anything like that. Anybody can pat themselves on the back getting a business in Orange Town, Carson. It's more difficult to get people up here in the northern community. We have a lot to offer, but it is a much more challenging task. I think Mike's more than up to it, guys. So I appreciate it. Diego, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Howie. Hi, Paul. How are you? Hey, Mike, how are you? Captain Clark. Welcome you know, it's, uh, intellectual infrastructure, just so Howard, there's Paul, all of you, it's, it's just so important. Uh, and that's one of the great assets that we have in Rockland County. Doing a little research, I, I discovered that Rockland County has the second highest percentage of, of members of our workforce that have advanced college degrees in New York City.